Welcome to part 12 where we finish the wiring. I'm going to start this by putting together uh, the 110 or the 120 voltage socket and switch with fuse. Um, simply insert the unit into the holder that we've already printed. And uh, I've decided to forego the wiring that came with the kit for this. Um, I had some 18 gauge wire sitting around and I'm going to choose to use this instead. Um, I think it'll be a little better handling the current. I don't think it's necessary, but I don't know, makes me feel better. I've also taken a length of power cord and um, used the connectors that came with it and crimped them onto the neutral, the hot, and the ground. And we'll be attaching these to the back. However, to make this work properly because of the integrated switch, um, you'll need to make another small cable, and that's this, this little patch cable, and this actually connects the switch to the hot. If you look closely at the back, you should see some lent letters printed that identify uh, the ground, the neutral, which is right next to it, and the hot, and then these other two tabs are the switch. So here I'm connecting the ground wire. The neutral wire. And then the jumper from hot to switch. And then the hot to the internal electronics. I decided to test fit the cable guides um, just to make sure I understand where it all fits and how we're going to have to run the wiring. Starting with the x-axis. Although I'm not showing it, I did insert a T-nut and then eventually add a bolt here as well to hold this end down. I then started to test fit the y-axis. The Z-axis parts are really designed for a two-bolt cable guide, so I had to go off and there's another repo where you can print these that are actually designed for th a three-bolt pattern and adapt to the two-bolt pattern. Uh, the link is included in the description of this video. If, like me, you've attached this cable guide on the AB drive, you'll need to take it off for this next part to make it easier to attach the parts. I attached the nuts to this holder with some blue painter's tape to stop them from falling out as I try to attach this. And now we can attach the cable guide. Next, we install the mounting block for the Z cable guide at the base.
Here I've partially inserted the cable into the cable guide and uh, this is necessary to get everything aligned. You've got to be really careful at this point. The wires are really thin and you want to make sure when you put these bolts in you don't accidentally either squeeze, nick, or break one of the wires in the wiring harness. Here I fed the wire through the Z-chain and I'm pulling it up out the bottom and then I'm going to curl it. There's a, a slot here, a spot to hold the cable and then uh, to pass it over so we can get it onto the Y-chain. I'll feed it here between the belts, make sure the cable's in there nice and then place the um, cable holder and bolt that in to hold the cable in place. I gotta say, if I were to do this over again, I would start at the print head and work my way backwards, back down toward the base. And I would actually do that before I attached any of the cable to the controller board in the base as well. Um, I had to go through and readjust this about three or four times until I can make this you know, work and fit reasonably. You've got to be careful here as you start to flex this wire around. It's really, really close to the belt. In fact, I wish this bolt-on guide was a little bit longer. I unbolted the Y cable guide and I also ended up taking off the end where it mounts. I ran the cable through and now I've reattached it. It seemed to make it a little easier. And um, again, if I were to do this over, I would start from the print head and work backwards. So I'm reattaching onto the x-axis, again, be careful. And when mounting this side, be extra, extra careful um, because it's not easy to get the wires out of the way. It turned out I actually clamped one of them down with a bolt and almost broke it by mistake. So again, be really, really careful. Uh, I cut the cables a lot shorter and um, I went ahead and crimped the pins on. And I s that way I can plug in uh, the hot end cooler and I will do the same for the parts cooling fan as well. bed leveling probe is a little more involved. There's this diode that's pre-attached and so I had to cut it, solder it to reattach it and now I'm putting some heat shrink tubing to protect it and give this a little strength. pre-made cable came with this guide to help identify what wires go where for LDO motors and the Blue Rolls kit does come with LDO motors. Um, here I'm just attaching the end just to make sure I get the alignment of all of this correct um, and then once I do I'm going to simply insert these pins just as I crimp them.
And then we go ahead and do the same for the AB motors. Notice I'm getting better at crimping these. I'm probably gonna have to go back and redo some of the other ones I did. Um, when you see the pins don't go in completely and where you don't hear the click when you push them in, uh, you can't be 100% sure they're properly inserted and fitted. And once I'm done and everything is tested and working, I'm going to 3D print a cable guide that is attaches to this rail to hold these wires properly. But this will do for now. I soldered the two micro switches to a JST connector, a four pin JST uh, female connector. Um, and I placed heat shrink tubing again to provide a little strength and a little more protection. And here I am uh, assembling the assembly that holds these uh, X and Y end stops. Once that's done, we can go ahead and mount the end stops. And here we simply bolt it in. And then, once those are reasonably tight, attach the cable. And you can kind of stuff this connector up inside to, for the most part, hide this. And once that's done, just make sure the end stops seem to work test it you should be able to hear the micro switch click in the previous video um, i connected the end stop the x and y end stop cable to the wrong sockets uh, they need to go to the x and y negative uh, make sure you do that set of the positive and make sure the cables the colors are aligned in this manner and make sure the z stop is in the positive area as well. And again, with the colors aligned just like this. Notice I have completely reoriented the electronics. Um, I had to for the harness to fit and um, this made everything work better. Again, if I would have started at the print head and worked backwards, it would have been better. Also notice I've started to crimp uh, some of the bare wires, especially the ones that connect directly to the higher voltage or the high voltage lines. And uh, again, it makes for a little neater, a little durable, and a little easier to work with. Also, you need to ground the aluminum plate um, or the heat bed of the printer. Uh, my voltmeter decided to just die. I haven't been having a lot of luck during this build. So I built this sort of crude makeshift device here with some LEDs. One lead is connected to the aluminum bed. The other is connected to, um, well, I'm checking for continuity here. And as you can see, I attach this yellow wire and this yellow wire goes to ground to the SSR. The SSR is bolted into the base and it turns out I have continuity all the way through. The LEDs light up to show that I actually do have that continuity. And so in essence, by simply attaching this yellow wire to the SSR and to ground on the power supply, I have grounded the base. Also, there are two electronics cooling fans here for the base. Um, I've attached the positives and negative leads of both. I solder them together and heat shrunk it, added a connector and plugged it into fan three. And just one more time to re reiterate the importance, make sure you ground the base plate, the aluminum plate. Also, uh, this SSR, there's lots of discussion online of fake ones. Um, I also added the link so you can check yours. This is a real and original. 
And again, double check all your wiring here. Uh, make sure all your AC connections are correct and proper. I found I made a couple of mistakes. Make sure you wire your Pi. Um, I had to insert it up here higher. Here I have a USB connector to the USB-C, which is how the data flows. And then for use the connector that came with the kit, make sure these red wires are pointing to the outside and um, connect them to the uh, board as well, the spider board. And that way you can avoid using a separate power supply for the Pi. Next, we've got to make the power connections to the spider. Um, the spider actually has two inputs for both positive and negative. Um, one is called power in, the other one is called bed in. You'll need to connect both. And there are three positive and three negative connectors on the power supply. And so we'll take advantage of those. I'm still convinced I'm going to be making some major adjustments here on the bottom. And so um, these leads, I've cut them long because um, I'm probably going to have to trim them later. And I've curled them a little bit here. I know it's a little bit odd looking, but I think it'll do for now. Um, again, I still have a lot of wiring I need to clean up here later on once I make sure this is all working correctly. If you're in a country that uses 110, the power supply is actually switched for 220 for safety so it doesn't get damaged. So you need to make sure you flip this to 115 versus uh, 220. One additional issue, uh, the crimps that came with the kit, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, they work great. However, my crimper um, didn't work so well and it turned out I yanked on these a little bit and they pulled right off. So I ended up replacing them with my own that really work well with my crimper. You might want to check this just to be sure.